My name is Courtney Dressing. All right. And Courtney, are we alone in the universe? I hope not. You hope not. Why do you hope not? Because I'm spending my career trying to find life on other planets, and I think it would be really sad if the only life in the galaxy were on Earth. Sad? Wouldn't, wouldn't that make us really special? Perhaps, but I would rather have friends than be special. <laughs> are you sure they're going to be friendly? I don't know, but it would be interesting to find out. All right. So you say, you, so you're not, sh when I ask you, are we alone, you, you don't know, but you hope not. Right. All right. And uh, when I asked you that question, are we alone, what did you understand by the word we? I thought you meant all of humanity or perhaps all of life on Earth. Do you have any preference for one of those? I think there's a lot of cool life that isn't human, so I should probably be more inclusive. If I were not in this room, would you be alone? There, well, probably. In some sense, I would be alone. In another sense, I'm sure there are spiders somewhere in this mm -hmm. room. Okay, so yes and no is that the answer. Right. I was just trying to get a, you know, we have to figure in the question, are we alone? There are two words. One is we and one is alone. I'm trying to figure out what they mean. And sometimes, since we're social species, maybe mm -hmm. we don't like to be alone. And so, therefore, it's... We want an answer to the question, but if we were asocial, more like orangutans, maybe we wouldn't think this question was so important. That's a fair point. Do you think this question is important? I do. I why? think it's interesting because from a scientific perspective, it would be nice to know exactly how and why life evolves. And if it's only unique to Earth, then that tells us something. How and why as well is how? How is one thing why, really? Well, like, why does it happen? It, will it always happen given certain conditions, or is it a rare event that happens only with some certain probability? And by it, you mean the evolution of, or the emergence of? The emergence of life. And do you mean viruses as well, or not? As an astronomer, I'm going to let other people decide whether viruses count. All right, okay. So you're My guess is no. You're hoping that ambiguity is not part of your field. Well, I, I think that... I care about the next stage. I would love to know whether there are microbes in the universe, but the thing I'm really interested in is are there other civilizations out there that also have telescopes, and could they find us, and do they know that we exist? So you're more, most of the public, I think, shares that they're more interested in finding more human-like intelligence than they are in microbes. So you share that as well? I just think it would be more fun. I'm, scientifically, I'm curious about all of it. Uh, and I think it's more likely that the life we would find first is going to be much smaller and much less like human life than it is like, I don't know, yeast. So you don't share Stephen Hawking's I don't know, paranoia that, hey, we should keep our head down. No. Maybe. no. So we should keep our head. So you wouldn't mind if we started broadcasting, hey, hey, aliens, we're looking for you, we're looking for you. <laughs> well, we're already doing that, so I think it's a little bit too late to worry now. Well, not as explicitly as we could be doing it. Right, and I think we should be more explicit about it. Really? Yes. You are aware that the average Earth-like planet in the galaxy is like two billion years older than our Earth. Right, but if they wanted to attack us, they could have already have done that. So we're really not giving them anything that they didn't already have. Either they know we're here, and they could attack when they choose not to, or they don't know we're here, and if they don't know we're here, we pr they probably can't attack us. So the idea of just remaining quiet and keeping your head down is not a strategy you so subscribe to. Well, no, I think I probably watched too much Star Trek, and you know, Which, the first generation, second generation, all of it, all of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if we are quiet, we don't yet have warp drives, then they can't contact us. So we need to make a fuss so they can say hi. So you're pretty optimistic about the moral integrity and non-killing. There won't be coming to kill us. Like humans really shouldn't start judging. It's like the pot and the kettle. Aren't you judging by being so optimistic and thinking they're all going to be nice? I'm not necessarily thinking they're going to be nice. I just don't think they're going to be that much worse than we are. And they probably know things about physics and astronomy that I don't know and I want to learn from them. Is that your main motivation, to learn from the advanced aliens? No, it's mostly just pure curiosity. Uh, there's a question about uh, when I talk to SETI people, mm -hmm. and they're, they're exclusively looking for human-like intelligent, al intelligent aliens, and I, and I often accuse them, or they have been accused of kind of like looking for God, or God is some omniscient creator who's going to tell you the answer to all your questions about physics and morality or whatever. Do you, what do you think of that idea, of that accusation? I think it's an interesting search, and everyone has their own motivation, and I'm more interested in just learning what's out there, and I think that's why I went into science. I want to know the answers to like, why everything is the way it is, and I would like to know the current state of the universe, and that includes whether there are other worlds with life on them. Do you think this curiosity which you seem to be exhibiting makes you a better person? Not necessarily. I think that's a value judgment that you can't assume based on someone's interests or lack thereof in life. So the unexamined life is worth leading? 
This is why I'm an astronomer. <laughs> you don't have to deal with these questions. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. Um, is the question, are we alone, an important question? I think so. Now, when you say I think so, there's a subjective I think so, but do you think in more outside of yourself for society, for example, or for I think for society, humans? For society it is an important question. Because? because we have been living our existence on Earth under the assumption that we are the smartest creatures that have ever existed. And in the past, when people have made that assumption, they tend to be wrong, and there's someone else on the other side of the globe who is equally meaningful and also deserves to have a good life. And I would like us to be good galactic citizens and do our part to keep the galaxy a good place. So you're probably against the extinction of the orangutans. Yes. Okay. Um, now, the, what we're doing here in astrobiology is trying to figure out how we got here and our place in the universe. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that any type of replacement for traditional religion? I don't think so. I think that those yeah. things can coexist together. Okay. Really? I think so. I think people can have religious beliefs that they can hold that don't necessarily have to enter into their view of science. I think ideally we would all be able to recognize that there's a difference between science and religion and they each serve a purpose. So it's kind of like separate uh, magisteria of Goulds. Mm -hmm. That's what you subscribe to. Yeah, I, I'm an atheist myself, um, but I'm also a Unitarian Universalist and that religion is actually oh. unique in that it contains a lot of contradictions inside it and a lot of people who believe different things and still go to the same church. You and I are similar in many ways. My mother, a Unitarian, mm -hmm. thinks the Unitarians have we're all here to help others. What the others are here for, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. If I gave you $100 billion with the caveat mm -hmm. that you had to spend it to try to answer the question, are we alone, how would you spend it? Oh, I would build Louvoir. You'd which, build Louvoir. Yes. which is, And I would have money left over. So why don't you tell, A lot our, of money why don't you left tell over. our audience what Louvoir is? So Louvoir is the large ultraviolet optical infrared surveyor. It is a large space telescope. It's actually a concept. It's not yet funded or approved, but it's an idea for a mission that and would And how much is going to cost? We don't know yet, but it will not be $100 billion. Okay, okay. It will be less than that. Um, we will find out the cost later on when it's costed by NASA in preparation for the 2020 decadal review. And uh, the purpose, science goal of this is? Multi-goals. Um, one of the goals, the one that I'm personally most excited about, is to detect life on nearby planets. And we can't guarantee that we will find life, but with Louvoir, we'll survey enough planets to place a statistical limit on the likelihood of life in the galaxy. By surveying planets, you mean looking at the absorption lines in the atmosphere, light coming through the atmospheres of these planets? Actually, with Louvoir, what we'll do is we'll directly image the planet. So we'll oh. see a star, and we'll block out the light from the star, and that will allow us to see the planet that's right near the star. So the common analogy is looking for a firefly next to a searchlight, yeah. but that's actually much easier. The searchlight is fainter compared to the, splash, the firefly than the star is to the planet. In addition to doing this science and allowing us to find things like oxygen and methane and ozone in the atmospheres of potentially habitable or inhabited planets, Louvoir will also allow us to study the earliest stages of galaxy formation and learn more about our own solar system. How about Mars? You think there's life on Mars? I think there was life on Mars and there may still be life in the subsurface. And Louvoir is not going to look at Mars and try to find life? We can look at Europa and Enceladus and Titan. <laughs> okay. Um, now, if I give you this $100 billion, you, you could make a little bar, but uh, you got a lot of money left. Yes. What, what else are you going to do? Well, since you mentioned Mars, we could go ahead and send some actual proper human geologists to Mars with some shovels and let them dig into the subsurface and see what they find. But that raises a lot of questions about whether sending people there would then contaminate the site. So perhaps we should think really carefully before we send people there if we're looking for biosignatures. Would you use any of your money to look for get really good microscopes to look for nano aliens? Perhaps, but I'm more likely to try to build giant telescopes giant on telescope. Earth or giant telescopes in giant, space. Giant telescopes. So would, if, uh, would you like to go to Mars? Would... As a kid, I actually did want to go to Mars. I wanted to be no the longer? first person there. I don't meet the vision requirements to be an astronaut. And one of the things that I really want to do is to search for life. And when I was a child, we didn't think that there were, well, I thought they were small planets like the Earth out there, but we hadn't found them yet. Uh -huh. And now that we've found them, uh -huh. I'm really interested in studying those worlds, and I let my friends study Mars. So if we could go to these worlds, you would? Yes. I see. So you're an adventurer. I would like to think I am. Okay. Even, how about, would you go on a one-way trip to these places? I would. You would. If I could bring my dog. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> now, your neurons inside your brain do not know that they're inside your brain. Right. Do you think it's possible that we could be inside of an alien? I liked Inception. It was a good movie. <laughs> so that's a conception. It's also Men in Black, I think, used that at the end. Right. right. Okay. So in astrobiology, at least for biologists, there's, some, there's an argument about if a feature has evolved one, more than once independently mm -hmm. on Earth, then that becomes a good feature that we should expect to have evolved elsewhere. What do you think of that logic? I think the biologists know more than I know. Uh -huh. um, but I also think that the initial conditions might be more varied than we realize. So by seeing things evolve multiple times on Earth, that might tell us something about things that are selected for on Earth. Mm. But if another planet is subtly different in a way that we don't yet realize is important, mm. perhaps that same feature wouldn't be expected to exist there. Okay, so you said you hope that there's life elsewhere, and you hope, I think, that it's uh, human-like intelligence. Well, not necessarily human-like, but something that is has passions and is pursuing them with joy, rather than just existing for the sake of existing. So something that would keep you as a pet? Perhaps. Okay. I don't know, do I get treated well? Or, or you could treat them as a pet? I don't know. What... Dog is good. Dog, dog is good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, let's suppose that the universe is filled with life. Okay. But let's suppose it's filled with microbial life. What fraction of that will have evolved into what you might call human-like intelligent life with telescopes and microscopes? I'm excited mm. to find out. I don't know. No idea. So you have no thoughts about this? You, you push that question onto the biologist and then you are agnostic. Well, I'm not sure any of us know. I think the biologists can make much more educated guess than I could uh -huh. based on how many species on Earth evolved to have more intelligent natures now than mm. initially. Um, I would hope that it's a number that's reasonably high. So let's, after World War Three or Four or Five, let's say in the next hundred years and we kill ourselves, do you think any other species will evolve into a so-called intelligence niche or do you think such a thing doesn't exist? I would be fascinated to find out. Yeah. If it happens that there's an intelligent species after us, then that bodes really well for finding intelligent life elsewhere. Yes. But if there isn't, then perhaps the odds are lower. Yeah, I'm well aware of things like that, but I was more interested in whether you think on Earth something would, would evolve towards being human-like intelligence. Biology. Have to wait and see. <laughs> wait and see. Okay. <laughs> wait, what kind of... Now, I guess you've already answered the question. I have a question here. What kind of aliens would you like to find? And you've already... You, I guess you replied in, with it, your, the emotional side of you, which I wanted to tap into, and that right. was, I want to find... What did you say? Oh, aliens that were passionate about something and had lives that they aliens. enjoyed and weren't just living to live. So it sounds like you're projecting yourself and out there and you want to find more Courtney's. Well, no, I would like to find someone who would have an interesting conversation if I invited them over to dinner. Friendly, intelligent alien. Yeah, so probably not the Borg. You know that most Earths in the universe have been there like on average about two billion years longer than ours, and so if there's evolution that's somehow parallel, that mm -hmm. that you're talking about talking to amoebas, or there we would be the amoebas, and they'd be the super or intelligent something. So why would they even bother with us? Well, as I mentioned, I have a dog, and I, we don't have detailed conversations, but I enjoy her company, and maybe only, the aliens would feel the same way about us. That's only 100 million years. I'm yeah, talking but, 2 billion. That's amoeba. Right, right, but maybe we could find the dogs on the other planet, and they could talk <laughs> <Okay>. to us. <laughs> Do you have a favorite alien movie? Contact. Contact. Okay, in the movie Contact. Yes. Are we alone? Well, if we are, it's an awful waste of space. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that comment? I, I totally agree with it. Totally agree. So I guess that's because you hope that there's life all over the universe that you can talk to. Right, and also I hope that I'm not wasting my time looking for life on other planets. Hope you're not wasting your time. But that's not really much of a scientific argument. No, I, it's I hope not. I'm doing well, something, but I hope I'm not doing something useless. Do you have any arguments for one way or the other? No, but I hope it. Well, because yeah. I, I would like to believe that there's life elsewhere, yeah. Yeah. but we don't have any evidence one way or another. Yeah. So I feel like as a scientist, I have to be agnostic about it. Yeah. So the only feelings I have about it are on the emotional side right, rather than right. the rational side. Right, so you're hope-powered. Yes. Okay, hope-powered, hope-powered. Do you have a favorite alien movie? You oh, you said Contact. Oh, Contact, right? Contact. Yes. Not uh, Star Trek or well, District 9 or something? Or D Space Nine? D Space Nine. Well, I like D Space Nine as a show, but the D Space Nine movies, they're not uh, as good. Okay. Have you ever seen a UFO? No. Have you ever been a... Well, I've had a UFO beer in Boston. You've had a UFO beer in Boston? Yeah. You've never seen an unidentified flying object? Not in the conventional sense. Conventional meaning you wouldn't attribute that mysterious thing to, a, uh, to no. an alien civilization. No. I certainly have seen planes and I didn't know, like, right. were they landing in Oakland or San Francisco? Right. That's have ever, different. Have you ever been abducted by an alien? No. That would have been fascinating. 
You ever talk to people who have been abducted by aliens? Uh, not, not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, they when talk you, to me, but I didn't well, listen. Once you get far enough in astronomy, people tell you things. <laughs> okay. So what do you know about aliens? In terms of like pop culture aliens or real? No, no anything, anything, anything. They would be creatures who live on another planet, and they'll have to tell us what they are. Do you think there's a galactic civilization, federation, that we're going to join as soon as we fill out the paperwork? That would be really fun. That would be fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, Arthur C. Clarke said any sufficiently advanced technology will be indistinguishable from magic. But there's this guy, Carl Schroeder, who's more of an mm-hmm. ecologist, tree-hugging type of guy. He says, no, any sufficiently advanced technology will be indistinguishable from nature. And so those are a little mildly different versions of what do we expect advanced aliens mm-hmm. to be. Do you, would, any comments on that? like some parts of nature are really magical, magical, which is why people enjoy going hiking and going to the beach, that it's just beautiful and serene. So both aspects are probably true. I think my cell phone looks like magic to my great grandmother, perhaps, if she were alive to see it. But if civilizations become more like nature, then they're harder for SETI people to detect. Yes, but then they're interesting. They remind me of Farscape and Moya, the ship that was actually alive. Say that again. Did you ever watch Farscape? I don't know what that is. It's a science fiction TV show, and the spaceship in which the crew travels along is actually alive itself. So the spaceship is alive. Yeah, so it's oh. blurring the boundary between technology and oh, life, which I is not that. quite the same I, thing, I, but it's it's oh. fantastical. Uh huh. Okay. So so okay. Now that I know what that is, say the sentence again. <laughs> oh. As a child, I really enjoyed watching Farscape, which includes a crew that travels along in a ship that happens to be alive. Uh huh. Okay. So that's kind of like blurring nature. And, all, mm-hmm. right. all right. Um, I think I already asked, did I, did I, I guess I already asked you whether you think SETI researchers are looking for God. I think people define God in different ways. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's looking for God with a capital G, but it might be looking for God with a lowercase g as I'm looking for a sense of meaning in life. So do you think that these aliens, you, you described them as fl- friendly, intelligent ones that you could have a conversation, do you think they'd help us out with the meaning of life? They might actually be very good instructors and say that we should think about the answer ourselves. <laughs> Sounds like parents. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you think are the public's or your students' biggest misconceptions about the question, are we alone? I think one of the big misconceptions is that when people think about aliens, they automatically think of the aliens they've seen in movies. And on Earth, we are not the most common form of life, so it's weird to think that something that looks like us would be the most common form of life elsewhere in the galaxy. Okay, so that's that's a form of projecting yourself onto Mm -hmm. the universe. Right. Which we do again and again and again. Aren't you guilty of that when you ask, you want to find, you know, friendly, intelligent aliens? Well, I just would rather find an alien I could talk to, that's all. Well, you can talk to yourself. We're talking right now, so aren't you projecting that onto the universe? Probably. Which is only human. That doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> All right, okay. So is that one of your biggest misconceptions about the question, are we alone? Well, once we find the answer, we'll find out what my misconceptions <laughs> okay. are. All right. Do you have any advice for students or people, or for people who are thinking about becoming astrobiologists? From the astronomy side, I think my biggest piece of advice is to start learning computer programming early. Take the science and math classes that your school offers, and more if you can. Definitely enjoy reading and pursuing other hobbies. You can't do science 100% of the time, and the majority of what you will do as a professional scientist is actually reading and writing, so it makes sense to hone those skills. And also have fun, and don't forget why you got interested in the first place. And why did you get interested in the first place? I wanted to find aliens. You wanted to find aliens? And you, how did you get interested in those aliens? Science fiction. You, for example? Star Trek and Star Trek. Captain Janeway, Lana Torres. And These are TV star science fiction. Yes. Not well, novels. also books as well. But what books? Um, I enjoyed reading the Miles for Kosigan series by Lois mm-hmm. McMaster Bujold. Could you say those words more slowly, please? I enjoyed reading the Miles for Kosigan series Miles by Kosigan. Lois McMaster Bujold, uh, which is a space opera that involves a man who has physical limitations but lives in a culture where physical strength is valued very highly and has to compensate for that by being clever and witty and doing things like inventing a space fleet out of thin air and lies. (laughs) (laughs) Inventing a space fleet out of thin air and lies? Yes. Wow. Who's this author again? Lois McMaster Bujold. He, she? She. 
And is she American, European? American, I believe. Okay, wow. Okay, and uh, for the last time, are we alone in the universe? We'll find out. <laughs>